Welcome, everybody, to the Gate Expectations podcast, where I bring in a weekly guest, talk all things Yu-Gi-Oh!, and get to know a little bit more about each person I talk to. This is the only Yu-Gi-Oh! podcast that is run by a full-fledged journalist such as myself. This is episode eight. If you haven't checked it out yet, you can check out earlier podcasts with guests like Pen God Steven Trifonoski, Jesse Cotton, Team Summer X1, Doug Zeef, and others. My guest for this week has been one of the most dominant players in the past two years. He has 10 Konami tops, including being on the winning team for YCS Las Vegas in the 3v3 championship as the final player to win this match for the title. Therefore, he is the current reigning YCS champion. It's Dominic Couch. Dominic, man, thanks for coming on to the show. Uh, no problem. I'm glad to be here. Absolutely, man. It's, it's great to have you on. I, I couldn't help but have you on because, you know, I've seen you a lot lately around my area even though you're you're from the chicago area if i recall yeah yeah i'm from the i'm from the chicago area i moved uh just before all the corona stuff in february to georgia oh really and what, what made you move down there uh just want uh i went to go live with my dad um that's all really oh okay got it and and now, like you're just you're become one of the best players as of late, man. Like t- ten tops in two years, uh, an impressive streak, man. And you finally won that YCS champion. But, but I know that that's been eluding you for quite some time, and that's just been like a big goal of yours, man. And so, like again, I I don't think I actually said it to you. Maybe I said it at the regional, but I, again, congratulations that you won on that. I know it's been several months since, but man, it, it was finally nice to know that you you got one. Like no, make, with me knowing who you are and like how you played throughout all the years, man. I'm, I'm glad you got it. Thank you. It means a lot. <laughs> so, so let's talk about. Uh, let's start with that t- to lead off with, man, because uh, that was a huge wild ride for you, man. I know there was a little bit of controversy that happened for you uh, before the whole thing happened, but l- let's start with the the actual championship match that you had because you were with uh, Steven Silverman and Scott Page. Scott Page being like probably one of the best Donald players that are out there, man. So, uh, how did it feel knowing that you got to team up with those guys for the event? Um, so it was, it was pretty good. Like Silverman doesn't play very much, but I know when he does play, he's pretty good. Scott, uh, plays in and out. I didn't, we didn't like necessarily play with each other for skill or anything. Um, they, they needed a teammate and we're all pretty close friends. And so I played, I played with them. So what was behind your, so what was behind the team name with, uh, you know, got to finish that. Uh, so it's like um, it's like when you have something really good and uh, there aren't any seconds around, you know, when you're eating, and then uh, you look at somebody, yeah. and then you know, kind of kind of picking at their picking at their food, and you're like, uh, "Are you gonna finish that?" <laughs> and it's, uh, it's kind of it's kind of a joke because we're uh, all large, yes, <laughs> in size. Yeah, I mean that, that was I, I I saw that as being one of the jokes that uh, that was being kind of run around as, since you guys won it, but. Uh, but, but who the hell cares? I mean, you you want a championship? Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd really yeah be, it was, I'd be it a was bit pretty bigger. funny. It was pretty funny. <laughs> but nonetheless, I think man. I think it was I think it was Scott that came up with it. Oh, really? Okay, so what? Yeah. You, and how did he come up with that exactly? Uh, we we were all like brainstorming, uh, fun, funny funny team names and like yeah. we had we had some really good ones, but mm-hmm. uh, Scott Scott said that one and it was just a wrap. Oh. Like we we knew that had to be the one. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, because I didn't understand that the name behind that. So it's nice that you provided some context because there's you see other team names that were there were kind of represented like the decks or at least uh, some kind of like ego boost or at least like something kind of like pseudo sexual or something like that. Something that you can like get away with at least like at a PG level at that point. So I was curious. Yeah, on how no, your team our, was. Ours, ours was just a little uh, fat, fat joke at ourselves. It was funny. <laughs> Hey, hey, whatever, whatever, man. You you got the win, and it doesn't matter. And uh, I know you're. Uh, you, you also formerly played football as well, so I mean that's that size also is a big deal for you as well. Yep. <laughs> so, so I know that uh, you were playing Shadows uh, during that time, and you both your mm-hmm. teammates were playing Dinos. Uh, we knew that Spirals was arguably one of the best decks that were out there at the time. Uh, what made you choose to play that deck? So, I played Spiral at the UDS the week before. I played a really cool Spiral deck. Um, it was just similar to the one that uh, Bowden played in, at, at Vegas and made top eight with. Yeah. And um, I got 
I went. I went like X one day one or whatever. Uh, pretty pretty much, I ended up finishing X three at the UDS and I got ninth. Yeah, which cool. is, when I was the highest X three, there were no X threes at top UDS, which is a which is a first for UDS. There's yeah, always an X three at tops. Yeah, so that was like really so unlucky, tough. and I was like pretty upset about it. But mm -hmm. you can it kind of happens. Like you you go to so many events, um, you it's impossible to top them all. Um. You know, there's always, there's always, no matter how skilled you are, a little bit of variance, a little bit of luck involved. So it, uh, it happens. Um, mm -hmm. I took I took what I learned from that event. Um, I didn't really know a ton about the Shadal cards going into that event, and uh, I went to dinner with uh, and hung out with the weekend with uh, uh, Team Black, which is uh, Carl Manigat, Sean Rye, uh, Christian Georges, and Guyton Georges. Mm -hmm. And uh, we had all – we had been hanging out, and Carl got second at that UDS. He, uh, he, he like, misplayed in, like, uh, in the finals and should have won the, that event as, uh, as well. Mm -hmm. So we were playing, and, like, I really liked the Shadal deck a lot more than uh, the Spiral deck because, like, it, it didn't matter how consistent I made the Spiral deck. It, um, mm -hmm. You, you kind of just, like – it was a dice roll for the mirror. Mm -hmm. And then – for everything else, it was like you either just draw insane, uh, like like the Sparrow deck does. You either just draw insane, or you just draw like really really poor, and like there's master plan in your hand. And mm -hmm. so, so the the deck like was really really bad fundamentally for deck building. Mm -hmm. Um, and there was just like way too much variance. Uh, when building the Sparrow deck, like mm -hmm. like you couldn't iron out numbers with it properly. And mm -hmm. it just it, it either like <sighs> crapped itself or like was insane. Like it was, it, and it was that was way too much for me mm -hmm. um, to like want to play it again after the UDS. Mm -hmm. So I learned. I uh, Carl Manigat, um after dinner he they were vending uh, Vegas. So after dinner in Tulsa, he. Uh, him and Sean Rye let me borrow the deck, mm -hmm. and then I edited the deck um, as I saw fit. I added like the Alistair Link because they weren't playing it before. Uh, I cut Boral Sword Dragon because I didn't feel like it was necessary to kill. Mm -hmm. um, I felt like it was a lot safer most of the time to kill with cards like Purgatrio or like or just like slowly grind the game out because Window was so oppressive anyway, as mm -hmm. you kind of saw in the finals. Yep. Um. So I made made some adjustments to the deck, and then uh, I just ended up playing the Shadow deck because I felt like it had it had a uh, unlosable Luna Light matchup. Like it was impossible to lose to Luna Light, mm -hmm. which uh, just started gaining a lot of popularity because it was like a combo that was almost as strong as the Spiral deck, but it got to play some hand traps like Gamma. Yep. In the main deck, uh, and search them out. So that deck started getting more popular, and it like also topped the UDS with the the Zodiac cards in it, like Thoroughblade and Barrage. Yeah. So I kind of saw the trend with that deck getting a little more popular. I felt like the Shadal Mirror wouldn't be super popular, and like um, I would probably be very like I'm I'm very good at mirror matches like that, especially ones that are like card like advantage based. Like I was very very good at the Striker Mirror. Yep. For so long. And like that's why I can top consistently with that deck so uh for so many events. So I felt like uh Shadal was more of like a mid range deck that like I felt very comfortable with hand traps and cards like Shadal Fusion in my deck. Mm -hmm. Um being able to go second and then like going first, I was able to like go uh Caligo window, which was like game against everything. Nice. So it was um I felt like it was a very good choice because it didn't really have a bad matchup uh outside of like very heavy trap decks mm -hmm. like Alter Geist or something would actually be pretty rough. But like those decks like didn't didn't really exist at the time because Spiral was Spiral, Lunalite, um Spiral Lunalite and the Rocket deck were like what was so popular. Did you find that spirals had like a form of inconsistency? 
when you play them because I when I played Spirals, like I would get like the occasional like dead hand here yeah. and there, and, and, so and that's and that, really far to fight out of. Yeah, so that's what I was saying with like the spiral deck either draws insane or is or like loses to one hand trip or can't even play. Yeah. Um. So I did. It wasn't like in like I built it. I was playing Scrap Recycler and stuff, and like so, we got it. I think I got it to a point where I was never really bricking, but like hands were either very very weak or very very strong, and I didn't like that. Um, the games I was playing were just decided by how well I drew and not like how well I was playing. Oh yeah, and That's so uh, should should all like. Let me um, play a more like skill intensive deck that let me like flex my brain muscles and let me like uh, control the variance a little more. Yeah, so so the, basically the skill ceiling in that deck was a lot higher because it had like a de- at least a decent matchup against everything else at that time in the meta. Yeah, and, and nothing was really like an auto loss outside of all. Or so so the deck I played before with the UDS uh, when I said it was like very similar to Bowden's is. Um, we we were like main decking anti spell fragrance and like Griffin setting anti spell fragrance game one. Yeah. So that was actually my only loss the entire tournament was when I played Bowden in top eight and he won the roll in anti spell beat. <laughs> so it was like um but any any other spiral deck, it was actually pretty breakable. Like um should all fusion and like melt meltdown and the Alster like the Alster cards. Mm-hmm. Um just break down boards like super naturally alone. Mm-hmm. And like I also played hand traps and cards like Phantasma. And like this um Phantasma is like pretty good at being a body to like crack over something as well if mm-hmm. they didn't end up Phoenix. Mm-hmm. Uh or it like help help me sculpt sculpt my hand to like have multiple Shadal fusions so that you know, because they only had one hard negation in Trigate. Yeah, that's right. So um once you once you got past that like one initial negation, then like app clone and should all drag in like pop uh or like negate last resort and pop resort, you know what I mean? And then and then like sleeper becomes very manageable with like a construct. Yeah, it's so just... um <laughs> the, the deck the deck just kinda like steamrolls the the better you play it. <laughs> uh so I like I spent that week in between like learning. And uh, it, paid, it paid off for sure. I was really happy with that deck. Yeah, especially like, since like, especially since Fantasmi is like one of those cards that can help like neutralize, um, can neutralize like Sleeper as well, which is also one of their big cards as well. Because that's kind of the the big combo mm-hmm. that w- that they would play for w- when they end up on a board to be like Appaloosa and whatnot. Uh, yep. Like Appaloosa. That back, interaction but... usually didn't come up much because they had Appaloosa. Yeah. But uh, it, it definitely did in their weaker hands. Yeah, but you know that they would have at least two link monsters out when they put like the Borke blocker up, and then another monster yep. beforehand before, so you can at least like Phantasmia at that point in time to like get around uh, to get around. That yeah, I, I, you usually like wait until um, when you see they're supposed to Appaloosa, or you can do, or I was doing it like before they would Trigate when they when they would do it, like summon the Trigate. Yeah, uh, with the blocker up top instead of making Appaloosa first, mm-hmm. which is which was wrong, but <laughs> some some hands had to be played like that. So that at least it worked out for you in the end. Yeah. <laughs> so I saw that you were sitting in between the Steve and Scott when you were doing your three v three, and generally like the middle person's the one that is able to lend advice I was to both teams. Not I was oh. not player B. Oh, you were not. Oh, I'm sorry. Where who's player B then at that point? Silverman. Oh, Silverman. So what was uh what was the strategy behind putting Silverman at, at player B? Uh so it's actually it's kind of funny because we went back and forth with whether I was supposed to sit in the middle mm-hmm. or um because I like knew the most, or yeah. if we should put Silverman in the middle. Um and what it actually kind of came up was we decided that like most teams' best players would probably be in the middle. Yeah. And like Sil- Silverman was the one that didn't know what he was doing the most out of all out of the three of us, because okay. because he like he like hadn't been playing at all. Like uh, yeah, he hasn't like played Yu Gi Oh since like Zoo format. Yeah. So, so yeah, 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 like like so. It was really nice to put Silverman in the middle because it meant that like me or Scott, whoever finished our match first, would be able to like 
hold Silverman's hand and like walk him through. Oh, I uh, see. Yep. And then and then like say say something like unfortunate happens. The the opponent's like best player is usually in the middle, mm-hmm. and like I I was like our like quote unquote best player, and I wasn't in the middle. So like we would cre- we would create like two mismatches in a sense. Yeah. And so it, so like my I would like. And and it worked. Like I didn't I didn't lose the match the whole tournament except for Bowden. Okay. So yeah. in top eight. So I like would always win and then like Scott or Silverman had to win and then and then we would advance. Mm-hmm. And, and then, it worked out. Yeah, I was gonna say it happened at least it happened like almost all the time because you had you had Silverman or Scott be able to at least get their win and like as you said, you you won yours up. But luckily in top eight, you know, Silverman yeah. and Page were able to bail you out at the one time you needed bailing out. Yep, that was yeah, and that was great. I, I like, I just picked up my cards versus Bowden, and then like, uh, was helping Silverman a little bit, and then Silverman beat Nishad, and then like, I couldn't really see at first what was happening with Scott and Ryan's game, but uh, that game was like super grindy, and then like, we came together as a team, and uh, I I like uh, I like helped or- orchestrate like the final play or two of their match as well. Mm-hmm. So we, we we worked as a team like very very well. Like mm-hmm. I would say like rounds like one through three, we like didn't have a ton of synergy like as a team yet. Like yeah. we were all we're all obviously very good friends. Um, Scott and Steve especially have known each other for like years and years and years. Mm-hmm. But um, we like started like clicking clicking as a team like round four or five, and, and then we like all started feeling really nice. Mm-hmm. Did, did you feel that like you and Scott didn't really needed your ha- kind of handheld uh, as much, which is why you put like Steven in the middle? Um. So so, uh, for being honest, they didn't know what my cards did. Okay. <laughs> which is like very fair because they came out a week ago. It wasn't the most popular deck, and it was fine. And they and they like, and we weren't like a team until like the day or two before the event. You know. Yep. So, um. I like don't blame them at all for not knowing what my cards did. So it was like anytime there was a, there was like a shit all thing, like a big thing was like when Scott would uh, lithogasm and he would rip cards out of his opponent's extra deck and he would see he was playing against shit all. Mm-hmm. Scott would like say out loud the opponent's extra deck and I would tell him the, the cards to rip. Yep. So oh. it's like um. So I didn't like get much aid just because of the the like. It was hard for me to ask the questions because, like, if I would ask the questions, um, like, what what should I do with this hand? They like mm-hmm. don't know where my deck went as as much as I did. Mm-hmm. So, um, in that aspect, I like didn't really need my hand held. I, um, and like, I was more more like helping than getting helped. Mm-hmm. But um, Scott Scott and Silverman were like the Dino brains. Um, like, I, and I'll be honest as well. I I didn't know like much about their dinosaur deck either like i knew how it worked fundamentally um and i knew like what the goal of it was but i didn't know like all the little intricate interactions to help out so they were able to help each other out once yep. they learned that. got it so so you were in the final in the finals you were the last match that was being occurred like you saw steven got knocked out but scott was able to win his match uh, did you yep. have like any kind of reaction when you found out uh, like what happened of the results of the other matches uh, i was very happy when scott finished first and he won because then i knew no matter what happened in silverman's match like i would be like in control and it was like whoever won my match would win and and that would make me feel like I uh I like earned I like earned my championship like if I was playing alone mm-hmm. like my my win deciding it helped helped like or it like uh it like put me at ease in my mind because yep. I've I've like been there before um I I just like have I haven't won before like I like I I'm I've gone to the finals myself before I I, I lost to Jesse mm-hmm. it just happens so it's like um I'm pretty like calm and top cut just because of, like, how much experience I've had. Mm-hmm. Um, so I don't think, like, initially when anything happened, uh, uh, there was, like, any real reaction. Uh, when I won my match, we, like, all popped off, and, like, obviously it was just insane. Um, yeah, so that was a but big other, th- other than that, uh, like, when Scott won, 
I was like, okay, that's good. That all I have that that means like if I win, it's over. Mm -hmm. uh, when Silverman lost, we had been talking, and it, it looked like for a long time Silverman was going to lose. So I kind of expected it. Yep. Um, but it was like so Silverman was Silverman was goaded. Like he 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 was saying stuff to me. Trust you know both my teammates trusted me immensely, which was very very which was very very helpful. Mm -hmm. Um, when Silverman lost, he was like. I think you can even hear it on the stream if you watch it. He goes, uh, come on, couch, control your fate. And, um, <laughs> you know, and that, that was like very, very good. I, I, I couldn't have played with like two, two better teammates, like for the event. Like, um, uh, I'm very, very happy. I played with them. Yeah. The, the reaction that you made was, was pretty big. Cause it, I, when I watched like YCSs or I watched like, uh, sh like Shonen Jump Championships back way, way back yeah. in the day, it, it's weird how like how much like humility the players have with uh, when they win. Like there's not like a big eruption for you. It was like a big, like a big explosion. Like you just big like a big, a big, well, yeah. So you know, that's like a huge difference between like winning with a team and winning by yourself. Like yeah. if I won by myself, I would have like, Put, put my like head in my hands and, and been like, oh, I can't believe it. Finally, this is insane. But mm -hmm. it's like when, when it's the three of us, it's like we all we all feed off each other. Mm -hmm. Um, so so it's like I shake my opponent's hands. Scott pops off. Silverman pops off. Of course, I'm popping off. Like, yeah. I, and that, and that was actually how it was for us. Like the whole tournament after like round five. Like whenever we would win a match, we all like come come and have a little like pop off together. Yeah. And we and like that that was what I was saying. Like. The, the team and like the synergy and it, it was just it was just insane and it uh oh man that 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 event that event like made those two my brothers they're just it was, it was just insane it was insane it's it's kind of like having a big celebration after like your team scores a touchdown or like scores a goal yeah ex hockey. exactly you, you like, kind of like, rally just, around it was just absurd yeah and, and it's, it was good that you were able to like build that kind of camaraderie because that like that really helps you be able to play off each other and like it was it was great that you were able to have that kind yeah. of teamwork and then again it propelled you to the top so i i saw that you had like a lethal board uh, against your opponent in the finals like window was locking him down hard like in magician souls he couldn't dig for anything yeah, so with I, it so i didn't make a uh so i found game in my head mm -hmm. um so there was like a very obvious way I could have killed him, but mm -hmm. I was scared of like Nibiru or Crow or something, and then like and then I wouldn't kill him, and then he would have another turn. Mm -hmm. And then like in game two, I like kind of learned from that because I I like, I like should have won game two, and I asked so I asked Silverman like should should I like just leave the window up or should I like go for the greedy play that like that like I win, and then like mm -hmm. I've I like inferenced um to silverman what i thought was in his hand which was master plan and then we like agreed uh which was master plan in the blank i didn't know the blank and then mm -hmm. we like agreed i should just make the greedy play because i was up game one anyway yep and then i got like dd crowed and then he ripped one for one and i lost obviously yeah so um i like went 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 like super big brain in my head and figured figured out a way to kill him like leaving window up the whole time mm-hmm um, so that I, uh, I like couldn't get, uh, or like I made sure I killed him with windows, like my fifth summon. Yeah. Um, or force. I don't remember. I just, I just know that window was preventing the bureau. So that was like crazy. And like, once I figured it out, I knew we won, but it was just, it was just like, uh, and you can even see it on the stream. Like I, I told him, I was like, yeah, yeah, I, I figured it out. He's dead. And then, um, and then af afterwards, it was insane. But yeah, because you know that at that point, like spirals need more than two special summons to be able to break a window. Because that was that's their like yeah. That so was the problem. Was like even if I got hand trapped by like a DD crew or something on my Alistair, so I couldn't kill him, mm -hmm. um, I still would have had window, so it would have been fine. Mm -hmm. And that that Trio was like the finishing hit because you knew that. Even though like Magician Soul was out, and you know he had a rescue in the grave, you knew that that Perga Trio would eat up whatever. Yeah, it, just, it was just gonna, it was just gonna pierce for infinite. Yeah, yeah. W which was the big game because I saw that ending. I don't know that he was trying to hold on. I was like, okay, I have a play, but you knew like deep down, I was like, well, regardless of what play you're doing, I still have you. It doesn't matter what happened. Yeah, yeah. So, what was that moment for you when you knew you had game? Uh, so like I didn't really like. 
so outside of like Purgatrio piercing, mm -hmm. I I like just kind of pushed my cards forward and I was like, this is game. Because I knew no matter what he had, it was game. And so when he was like, which one are you attacking? Blah, blah, blah. I was, and I like did it. And I like did it the right way. But I, I was just like so excited that I, I knew I had won the YCS. That yep. I was just like pushing my cards forward. Mm -hmm. um, and then like when he just like sat there, I was like, okay, like, come on. You can't do anything. Like, I, I understand it sucks. I've had to concede the finals, too, but you just got to pick up your cards. Well, do you then, think uh, – yeah, go ahead. Sorry. And they finally did. And then, like, uh, it was it was Ayunde who nudged him and was like, bro, bro, it's over. Like, <laughs> we're good. It's okay. Did you feel like he was being, like, pretty stubborn about it before, like, he relinquished the victory to you? Uh, I mean, I think it's pretty natural, right? Like, like if you're losing a finals after you uh, – especially, like, with your team, right? Like, like – you had like there was there was the opportunity to win for your team, and then like you feel like you might have let your team down. Um, mm -hmm. So like accept accepting the defeat can be kind of hard. Mm -hmm. um, I I know for me it was like uh, it, it it like it definitely hurt me when I had to like concede to Jesse when I lost at Knoxville. Yeah, but but like it, it is what it is. Like mm -hmm. um, there's nothing you can do about it once it's done. Yeah. And, and man, what a, what an ending for you! Because I know that like the YCS championship was uh, eluding you for quite some time, even though you've had like a not like a short. Yeah, I, per se. I was really really hungry for it. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that was a big to you, and it meant a lot to you. But I know that there was a little bit of controversy that surrounded around you and I, I think Dakota Angeloff, like before the event started. Uh, you originally you were supposed to be on his, his on his yeah. team, I recall, and then you got dropped for. Uh, for Shunping Zhu, who won uh, like a UDS, I believe, with Rockets beforehand. Yep. Yeah. What What exactly happened with with all that? Uh, I'm not gonna go into too much detail because it's over and done with. Yep. Okay. That, that's fair. Um. Pretty much. I had. Um. I was originally playing with Cody Manov. Mm -hmm. Um. I had like a big issue because Cody like wouldn't test, um, like Cody wouldn't test, and if if we want if we were to test, he like was gonna do it on stream. Yeah, and like uh, and you know for an event, I'm like I'm like all about secrets when it comes to a deck, so I like definitely didn't want whatever I was testing to be like out in the public. Okay, right. I, so I, I... Then I had a problem with that, and then I left. I, le I left initially because we couldn't come to a conclusion and it, it wasn't, I didn't like leave, leave. It was, it was like, I left the group chat because I was pretty angry. Mm -hmm. And then Manav called me like a day later mm -hmm. and then like Manav convinced me to come back and said everything would be better. Mm -hmm. And then, so I get yeah, added back to the group chat and everything the Thursday night before the UDS um, we're at the UDS. We all get breakfast together. Me, Cody, and Manav. Manav is Manav roomed with me. Um, we're all good, and then we're all good Sunday after the event. And mm -hmm. I get on my flight from Tulsa to Vegas. I didn't go home in between, mm -hmm. so I get on my flight from Tulsa to Vegas Monday. And like while I'm on my airplane, um, it's funny. While I'm on my airplane, Scott and Silverman message me. Um, to be the third, and I was like, sorry, I can't, I already have a team. Mm -hmm. And then 15 minutes later, after they messaged me, uh, Cody kicked, from, kicked me from the group chat. Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, and then, uh, and then, so I messaged them back, and I played with them. Is everything, like, okay? Like, are you still cool with, like, D Dakota and Mad Manov right now? Uh, I'm, I'm very good with Manov, uh, I don't. I don't really want to talk about the relationship between me and Cody. It's, it's okay. not. It's not really for the public. Okay, that's that. That's completely fair, and I respect that. I, I didn't know if you wanted to share that or not. Because I'm sure a lot of people would want to know. Oh, sure. You you can feel free to ask any question. Obviously, I just, <laughs> there are some. There are some. I just would would rather not answer. Yeah, that's that's completely fair. I understand it, but it's like thankfully for you, like it. It pulled out in the end because you're you you walked home with a championship that day. Yeah. Yes, I had plot armor. <laughs> so at least you won. Like you reached your goal, and 
and I, I gotta bet you gotta feel like a million bucks after making that goal because I know that yeah for the I, past I, two years that was your thing. I def I definitely I definitely feel like a million bucks, mm -hmm. especially like when the three of us like, um, I didn't stay with Scott and Silverman for the event because I had booked the hotel for me Cody and Manav. Yeah, so I was in a different hotel, but mm -hmm. um, when when like we went out and had our celebration dinner and like. We all had our trophies together and our prize cards together, and we were yep. all just chilling after the event, all, all knowing that we won together. Yeah. That was just, like, crazy. And then, like, you go and read all the congratulations on Facebook, and it, you, you just feel super nice. You just feel super nice. <laughs> and w what did you – what was your celebration dinner? Uh, it, was, it, was actually, it was not what we wanted. We wanted to go to uh, Fogo de Chao, but it was closed. What, well, and what is that exactly? Uh, it's like a it's like a Brazilian steakhouse. I, oh, you guys have oh, you guys have one called uh oh man Jesse talks about it all the time. I can't I can't think of the name. Yeah, he mentioned that a lot uh, when I podcast with him, and that was one of his like favorite things to eat. Like especially when we go to what, Niagara what, Falls. What, what is the one in Canada? What's the one in Canada? Uh, I know there's like several in Canada. Like, there's like none around where I am. I'm just trying to think of it. It started with a B, ended with an A, and had like five letters in between. So it was like Bravsa, I think, or something along those lines. But I know there's like several, and, and I'm not familiar with it. I've only had Brazilian Steakhouse once, unfortunately, because of uh, the proximity of where I live. Yeah, I, I don't remember what it's called, but uh, it, it's like it's like that. Um, mm -hmm. It's just a Brazilian Steakhouse. They're super broken. They're my favorite. They're, they're, they're like hands down the favorite meals when I go to events uh, mm -hmm. with everybody. But they were closed after we won, and uh, some people had to go catch flights and stuff like that. So we all went to uh, Shaquille O'Neal's uh, chicken place, <laughs> and uh, it, you know it was it was like not a super like extravagant dinner or whatever, but but it, it was like good to eat with all the boys and talk and just talk about the weekend. Was it just you three that ate together, or did you eat with like a bunch of uh, other no, friends no. as well? Like, uh, like C C Christian Urena came. Uh, Cam Cam was with us. Joey Chow. Mm -hmm. Um, can't remember if Ned was there or not. I mm -hmm. I don't. I think he was with Bowden. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, it, it was great. It was great. And you know, just 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 sum up the whole experience for me. Like after like going through all of that, and then finally coming out and winning like a, a YCS. Um, so it was, it was definitely a grind. Like, um, I started my, my first Konami top ever was, well, like that's not dragon duels was, mm -hmm. um, as a Columbus, I believe the 200th. Yeah. It was, it was, the, it was the 200th in Columbus. I got like fifth or some or something after Swiss mm -hmm. with, uh, striker mm -hmm. and I lost in top 64 to Gabe. Mm -hmm. Um, and then I topped the event right after that in Pasadena in 2018. Uh, I got, I lost in top 32. And since, since then I have never lost the first round of top cut again. Yeah, which, which is good. And it's, it's, it's not easy making it that far. I'm sure. There Actually, are a lot of yeah. I lost, I lost the top, top 16 in Peru, but, yeah. um, I didn't, I don't really count that as the first round because it's top 16, like not top 32. And, exactly. and I'm like also not by myself. So it's, it's different. Yeah. Cause that was also uh, another three V three that you played. Yeah. Who are your teammates on that one? I played with a uh, Gabe and Galileo. And how were they as teammates? Well, they were, they were, they were fine. Like, were you, fine. were you playing in the middle on the, on that team or where were you sitting? Yeah. I, yeah. I played in the middle. Like, what were you playing with that one? Uh, I I played a like really cool thunder deck that I like made by mm -hmm. myself. Mm -hmm. Um, but it it was like probably just worse than like the Draco Net one. Uh, Jesse Asal and Furman played. Oh, okay. At the same event. So like, but, it, no, but none of none of us work together for three v threes because we're cause we're <laughs> on different teams. It's different, than, right? Than, like playing by, by yourselves. Yeah, because you're on. You're currently on Game Nation now, if I recall correctly. Yeah, I am. I've been I've been on Game Nation for uh, over a year now. 
Yeah, so how did that come about? That because considering that you were a player from Chicago now and, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, and then now so you got like, on a Canadian I team. I was on Pro Play Games. I was on PPG, mm-hmm. and Kamal and Fredella, uh, who were both very close friends of mine, got banned. Mm-hmm. Um, so PPG was like in shambles. The only people that were like active and traveling were me and Ruben. And, uh, so, and, like, we weren't, like, getting paid super well or whatever. Um, and then, like, I was at, uh, you know, I went to this double regional, and, well, and Je- Jesse was also at these double regionals, and Ray happened to also go to these regionals. It was, the first regional on Saturday was in Indianapolis, uh-huh. and the second one on Sunday was in St. Louis was in St. Louis, Missouri. And uh, I met Ray very briefly on Saturday, and I, I kind of just, like, told him a joke. Uh, and we laughed, but, but, like, I was playing, yeah, you know, World's Points and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the second day, me me and Jesse had, like, both finished our rounds pretty quickly, and I, I was kind of hanging out with Jesse. And then uh, he, like, more formally introduced me to Ray. Yep. And, like, me and Ray had a real conversation for, like, 10 minutes. And then uh, at the end of the regional, Ray invited me to dinner. And uh, he invited me to join Game Nation. And the, the rest is kind of history. We, we kind of just, like, what he always told me is when he meets somebody that he knows he wants in his life, Mm -hmm. um kind of just jumps on it so we kind of like met each other and like hit it hit it off immediately like Mm -hmm. both loved each other's personalities and Mm -hmm. we were just like very positive people and he Mm -hmm. like wanted wanted me to join how easy was that decision to make to to leave pbg and join up with game nation it was a little hard at first um, because, like, people had, like, been making jokes about me hopping teams. Yep. Because, like, uh, so a lot of, like, pretty small teams, I went, like, back and forth between after my first couple tops. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was just because, like, they were, like, not handled well. Um, and then, like, so I kept switching up, and then... I was on PPG for a couple months or so, uh, a little longer, probably like three months. I was on uh-huh. PPG, uh-huh. and then, uh, but like once Come On Fredella got banned, it like wasn't the same team anymore, and like the pay, like the pay scale and stuff on PPG was never that great. Uh-huh. So uh, I like definitely wasn't inclined to stay monetary, mon- monetary value wise. And, like, my friends, like, couldn't play Yu-Gi-Oh! anymore. They were banned. So, it was, like, it was it was a pretty easy decision when I thought about it. But it, I, I, like, didn't want to take any more team-hopping jokes. Yeah, that's uh, that's fair. But, I mean, like, Ray, uh, shout out to Ray because he's a fantastic guy. I've had a lot uh, yeah, of I, 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 I lo- love the guy with all my heart. Yeah. He's yeah, he's a, a bit of a joker, but he's like a really cool, chill guy. I love being around him. He's got a he, he's got he, a great me job. Him, me and him are very similar. I I love hanging out with him. Yeah, really easygoing guy. Really great guy. He's got a great shop in Toronto, and a b- big shout out to him and and Game Nation. And they have a lot of quality players over there too. So, yeah. uh, th- you know that that's also a big thing too. I, I find because that the skill level on that team is incredibly high, and I don't know about you, but have you do you think that you've gotten better like since you joined that team? Uh, so I don't know if it necessarily has to do with joining the team, like, per se. Mm -hmm. I I definitely have gotten better while I've been on Game Nation. Yeah. But I I don't, I wouldn't say it's, like, in direct, it's, Game Nation has definitely helped. But it's Mm -hmm. not, like, a direct correlation. Like, like, like being sponsored doesn't just make you better. Yeah. Like, it's, um, work, work, like, countless hours, like in the lab, like, testing and perfecting my play, and then, like, you know, uh, other players in circles, you mm-hmm. know, hang, hanging out and talking, and then, like, Game Nation definitely opened open doors, like, um, I became, like, 
really good friends with Jesse through yep. Game Nation, and like obviously he's he's like the best in the world right now. So I I definitely like learned um learned a lot from like playing with him and talking with him. Yeah, that's what I wanted yeah, so, to. Unpack. So I, was, I would I would say yes and no. I don't think like you know wearing a Game Nation hoodie made me better, but yeah, I think okay. like a you know like the the small intricacies um of game nation definitely did yeah okay well i maybe i should have unpacked my question a little bit more with you because um because there's uh, there are a couple things i was implying there as well is that like when i i would assume that when you join team game nation like you have more of like an intimate like playing relationship with jesse and i would think that you know you would learn like a little bit more off him considering like to your to what you said he's like one of the best in the world and i, I would agree with you on on that regard so i, w- I was just thinking like would at least be talking to jesse and hanging out with him more um, on like a yu level like has he- like helped you like be a- at least a little bit better on that regard uh I, I mean yeah of course like it like it always is when you when you play with people that are better than you you get better like it's Mm-hmm. It's just kind of how it works, but like that, that like wasn't why I joined Game Nation, and it's like not why I'm friends with Jesse. That's yeah. that's like none of that's Yu Gi Oh related. Mm-hmm. I wanted to like peck a little bit more in, into that uh, relationship you you have with Jesse because you know as you told me before you at YCS Knoxville you guys were playing against each other in the finals and you were both already teammates at that point. Like how did it feel knowing that you had to go against him like in the finals? Uh, of a YCS. Oh, uh, that, that one was kind of rough. Like we both knew each other's decks, like almost card for card because mm-hmm. we'd been testing so much. Mm-hmm. Um, and like me and Furman were on my Orcus deck and Jesse and Asal were on the Thunder deck. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just, it was just kind of a clash. And like, I, 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 I definitely got like unlucky with, with how, poor my hand was game three but like Mm -hmm. jesse definitely played like out of his mind as well and and like it it was it was a great match and he deserved the win so i'm not like you know you i'm i'm as least salty as you can be when you get second place yeah Um, when you lose a championship yeah that's fair like like i'm obviously you know you're salty when or like you're upset whenever you get second place like no matter what the reason is yeah but um, Jesse definitely deserved it. And I like don't feel bad about losing to him. Is it fair to say that you know, even though you lost the finals, at least it went to Jesse. Like the like, if it wasn't going to be you winning a championship, best that Jesse was the one who was winning it. Yeah, yeah. And the, how how like close? Like, are you like guys if I was losing, if I was losing to somebody that tournament, I definitely wanted it to be like like Je- Jesse Asal or Furman. Like yeah, hundred percent. That that's fair. I understand. And like, how is your relationship with with Jesse right now? Uh, I mean, Je- Jesse's one of my best friends. Like, mm-hmm. uh, it's it's like not because of Yu Gi Oh. So, are there like fun like little travel stories that you you have with him at all? Oh, uh, <laughs> so there's like. Oh man, I don't know how like funny this one is. It's it's like much funnier <laughs> looking back, but it probably wasn't very funny in the moment. Okay. <laughs> um this this was like before me and Jesse were really friends, but me, Jesse, and Asala shared a uh Uber um at UDS Las Vegas. <laughs> and <laughs> like they like dropped me off and then Jesse and Asala got dropped off or whatever. But like no one, no one, or or Jesse Nasala got dropped off, and then I was the next stop, and like no one had heard from me or like anything until like the next day of the event, mm-hmm. and so so it was like there was kind of there was kind of like a small running joke that I got kidnapped. <laughs> so it, it, it's like funny looking back when you look yeah. at it from all sides of the story, but it, yeah. it like it probably wasn't very funny in the moment because like. It, they might have just actually thought I was kidnapped, and that would have been very bad. Did they legitimately think that? I don't. I don't know. Like, <laughs> like, I think it was like half jokingly, half serious. Yeah. Like, uh, they they were definitely relieved to see me day two. Yeah, that, that I can say that. I can say that much. Yeah. No, I, I know um, that you. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. 
other than that, I haven't like traveled and stayed with Jesse very many times. Uh, like mm-hmm. we say, we stay together at UDS Indianapolis mm-hmm. when we built that, uh, like the Gizmic Thunder Deck together. Mm-hmm. Um, and like that was a pretty fun event. Like me, me and every every Foster wrestled in the hotel room. <laughs> um, but I, I don't know. Like I, I haven't like. I've gone to a lot of events in the past two years, but not nowhere near as many as like a lot of the other pros. Like, like, uh, like if you if you ask Jesse stories, I'm I'm sure he has tons. Like, yeah, I, I, I just don't I just don't have a ton of stories because like, for me to like develop the stories, it would have to be like when it went when I when I, like from the point I was friends with all these people, mm-hmm. and then the stories were made, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but like. Probably like that first year I was playing, I really wasn't friends with them. So, okay. like I didn't, I didn't know them. Mm-hmm. So and then like especially especially with like COVID and stuff, we have none of us have gotten to travel. Yeah, and it's yeah, uh, I definitely have like a bunch of enjoy, enjoyable moments and stuff I've I've shared with uh, you know Jesse and all the other guys, but I don't I don't have like uh, a ton of fu- funny stories like they would. Oh man, actually I have a really funny story with Jesse. But I'm gonna get flamed. I'm, oh. gonna, keep it real. I'm gonna get flamed. Okay. This is this is the funniest story I have with Jesse. All right, shoot, shoot. So me, Jesse, and Patrick James are all in an Uber. Mm-hmm. And uh oh man. I like <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. I'm getting, <laughs> I'm, gonna get flamed. I'm gonna get flamed. But so I, I I thought the I thought the like the Uber driver was kind of cute, and um, her voice was like a little deeper, but I thought she was just like like maybe like she was sick or had a cold. Yeah, and then like uh, I, I said something after we got out of, the, out of the Uber, like when we got back to our hotel, mm-hmm. and I was like, oh man, she was kind of cute, and then Jesse and Pat both like started dying and laughing at me because she was she was definitely just transgender and i didn't know oh really yeah i just, I just got flamed it was crazy <laughs> it was uh it was so it was it was like so funny but i was so embarrassed i was like oh my God. no way i was bamboozled. no one will judge you don't worry yes <laughs> I'll def- i'm definitely getting flamed it's okay though I had a giant smirk on my face during the entire time you were saying that because, like, you're building up to something big, and I was already enjoying it as it was. <laughs> I was very, very short, but I under, I can understand the the comedy behind that. Yeah, that that's uh, I think that's the funny the funniest story I have with Jesse, like <laughs> so far. That's fair. And like, were they were they pretty hysterical after you left, like the Uber? Uh, no. I mean, like, I didn't say it in front of them. Yeah. Like it, it was like when we all got out and we were going to go cube. And then, uh, and then, like me, Jesse, and Pat all went and got dinner together, and yeah. uh, and like they were like just flaming me all of dinner, and I was like, oh, oh my god, I see. crazy! <laughs> so they, oh, they, so they just uh, they just pinged you after. Oh god, what was it? Was yeah, like I mean, it, it, it was it was all jokes. It was all jokes. Like yeah, of being, course. You know, like we're all we're all friends. Yeah, of course. And then like, if you get cut that comfortable enough, with it, yeah, yeah, they were like just they were just they were just giving me crap. It was funny. Yeah, it's funny because they weren't giving and crap about that. It still gets like brought. It still gets like brought up as a joke every now and then it's really funny <laughs> I'll, try not like to bring it up. Joke. I'll try not to bring it up with you whenever i see you next day whenever regionals happens oh, again please don't <laughs> I won't, I won't. you know speaking of which like i've seen you uh come to toronto regionals uh you know when uh back before all this like this pandemic started like you came um back in december which like the first sure. day of december when it happened and then what happened i think a month or a month or two later uh, I I saw you there. I'm pretty sure. I think you topped both of them. I know you topped at least one of them. I, I, I won both of them. Yeah, and you you won both of them. And I I found that I was sitting beside you almost every single round, at least in the first one. I sat beside you in one round in, in the second regional at, at Toronto. Was, um, you know how? And you were going for for points playoffs at, at that point, weren't you? Yeah, like it, it was points playoffs for this year, but you know, Corona F. Yeah, it's kind of stopped everything. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. So that's 
so you were traveling to a lot of regionals at, at that point in time, trying to build up those points. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, uh, what enticed you to decide to go for that uh, points playoff push? Oh, I just want to go to worlds. So it's like, why, why would I not like give myself an edge Yeah. and like try to have a set. And I, I like already play like a lot anyway, when, when, when like Yu-Gi-Oh is going on. Mm-hmm. So like, um, I think like what Konami does for the world point system is great. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm like very happy to be a part of it, and I like that it gives you like a, a like additional chance to go to worlds um, mm-hmm. and and reward you for playing so much. And I remember last year that you were you were in the points playoffs hunt as well, and you went off in that uh, that playoff tournament, and I believe you lost to to Gabe Vargas, if I recall correctly. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So how was the, how was that match for you against uh, against Gabe when you were playing in that playoffs? Uh, I mean, I got unlucky. It happened. Because <laughs> it wasn't. Like I, it? I was. Oh, I was. The, I was the points leader by like very large margin. Yeah. Uh, I lost in top eight. It happens. And was was it that if you beat him, then you would have went to worlds at that point, or would you still have to have like? Uh, won I would have had to beat him, and then I would have played against uh, Zach Stone, who was playing Sky Striker. Yep. Um. My deck was like almost fine tuned for the striker matchup and the mirror. Mm-hmm. Um, like I figured out a cool secret village combo in the orcas deck that uh Tang Nguyen actually used and got fifth in the main event. Oh really? Okay. And what yeah. what, uh, what spellcaster do you use to? to you like used a Wee Witch's Apprentice, and then you would oh. ah. So you would have, you would have you would have crescendo with uh, Galatea, uh, Rusty Bardiche, and a Wee Witch. Uh, and then you had Crescendo and one Fog Blade set. Oh, that's and, and really And Seeker Village up. Oh, that's sneaky. And, was that- so you would you would Fog Blade the Wee Witch so mm-hmm. that Ray couldn't attack over it because mm-hmm. if your monster's Fog Bladed, they can't attack it. Yep. And then um, for any out they might have had, like Panker Tops or Evenly Matched or Typhoon, you had uh, Crescendo. Yep. So it was like game. It was a pretty good soft lock at that point. Yeah, it was just, it was just game. Yeah. yeah. So I wonder you, just kill, you just killed him the next turn with Secret Village up. Oh, nice. Did you get that? Did you get that combo off Austin? Uh, I got it off like a bunch in Swiss, like the actual tournament. Mm-hmm. Uh, this the second day, and it was that was it was like it was really good. Like I I played that deck and Joey Chow played the deck, and it it was it was a good deck. It, it just. I got. I just got unlucky in the playoff, and it happens. Yeah. So, it, it was. It was really cool, though. I, I bet. Like that's that's definitely a tournament that's like exclusive to like very few people. So like you know, I would assume that being a part of it was like, uh, you know, re- really fun and maybe perhaps like a big honor to be a part of, considering that. Uh, yeah, I mean, like, I mean, not I, many people I, in it. Yeah, Ko- Konami has done like such a good job with their with their points playoff stuff and like re- and everything with Yu Gi Oh. Um, mm-hmm. So it was like to uh, to get to participate in it was like almost prestigious, and I really enjoyed it, mm-hmm. even though I lost. <laughs> well, I want to rewind a, a little bit back to uh, I, I believe it was 2014 where you were a dragon duelist. Oh man, at, at that I time. Sure was. <laughs> so, so what, what was that make? Would that make you like what 19 right now? Then I'm uh, 18. Or, or 18. All right, got it. So. I know you played Dragon Duelist. Uh, did you at least like win anything or uh, do well when you were a Dragon Duelist? I got uh, top four. Mm-hmm. I have uh, Dragon Duel ones in 2014, mm-hmm. which was a uh, match away from Worlds as well. Oh so shoot! Only shoot. only the top only top two uh, go. Yeah, and I know that after that you had like a bit of a, a bit of a break from Yugi. You had a gap from what I call like 2015 to. To 2018, if is that correct? Yeah, I was pl- I was playing football and wrestling and doing a bunch of like real life stuff, and then I uh I had a like I had an injury. I, I got a really really bad concussion, and mm-hmm. I was told I could never play contact sports again. Mm-hmm. And then uh, so I I like uh. I don't know. I was like really depressed for a while, and because I because I like 
had been working at stuff and then I like couldn't do it anymore. And then like I started, uh, I like found my old Yu-Gi-Oh cards and then I like went and tried it out again. Um, to, like start doing something social again. And, uh, you know, here we are. Here we are. It's, it's been a good trip for you so far, uh, to say the least. Mm-hmm. Uh, what happened? Uh, well, sorry. Well, first of all, what sport were you playing when when the injury had occurred? When you had um, I was playing football, but I don't. Uh, it's kind. Of, it's kind of painful to talk about. I don't really uh, want to talk about that much. Okay, that that's fair. Um, what position did did you play in football? Um, I, I played the line. Like oh, you often, play, often, often the defensive line. Yeah. Uh, Okay, um, like were you were you a guard tackle? Were you a center? I, I played guard and nose tackle. Oh, nose tackle. Okay, so and, and you're playing American rules too, so that which is I love. Not a big fan of Canadian rule football. I love American football more than anything else. So, but but I, and I and I played a couple well, of years. It's uh, definitely much more aggressive. <laughs> it definitely is with Canadian football. You only get three down, so it's it's a little bit faster. But I feel like American football is a lot more strategic when you have that extra down. And there's a lot more pressure on the defense as well, I find. But you know, I, I digress. Like, I'm, I'm sad that you got that injury, but because like I love playing sports too. I'm a, I'm a big athlete myself. But uh, you know, it's it, an injury suck because I like my knees have been kind of bashed up a bit. Thankfully, no ACL tears. But like my, my ankles hurt a bit too. So like, uh, and I'm actually like really short too. I'm like five foot four and a half. Yeah. So I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. <laughs> so. You know, it's hard for me to make it as an athlete with the the kind of size that I have, unfortunately, and like not the greatest knees and ankles. So that's any leg injury on an athlete is like probably one of the worst things to happen with a head injury as well. Yeah, yeah, no, my my head is like, yeah, uh, I'm just not I'm not the not the same. So yeah, it definitely is. was like, it just was just the one concussion that you had, or did you have several? Uh, so. I might have had like some smaller ones, but the one big one I had was a uh, you know huge sub- subdermal concussion. So oh, shoot. yeah, it, w- it wasn't good. Yeah, because you know how they say like once you get one concussion, it uh, like you know the next ones get a lot easier to get, and and I don't know maybe that one if you had like a bunch of little ones and you just didn't know, and then happened that, that big one just kind of just might have, put you on might the top. have had some little ones, but uh, it was really just one big one that kind of did it in. Yeah, and, and that's fair. And that's that, that's really tragic, man. I I feel bad for you on that part, but you know, at least hey, at least on the under other end of it, getting back into Yu Gi Oh. I mean, I think you've done pretty well for yourself. I would think. Yep. <laughs> so, your first top was uh, with YCS Columbus with uh, with Strikers. Yeah. How did it, how did it feel that you when well, you got that first top since you made your your return to Yu Gi Oh at that point in time? Oh, uh, I felt insane. Um... <laughs> I uh I was very very sick that event. I, oh, uh, really? Did, yeah, day one I, I was like fine in the morning, mm-hmm. and um, uh, towards the end of the night I, I like started getting like really woozy and my skin started like itching. Mm-hmm. It was really bad, and I just I just like passed out for hours. Oh, like day to pass. Two, day two, I woke up and there were. Uh, like hives all over my hands and feet and and like uh-huh. my if you go look at the deck profile you can see like all the hives on my face as well i uh i woke up and i didn't know what was going on uh-huh. um I, like my friend joe went to the store uh, while i was playing and he he got some benadryl and shout out to him uh-huh. he's broken uh-huh. and it was good enough to like make it through the rest of Swiss so so I could get my first top and that was great but uh after I got back home I I figured out I, I uh was so sick because I had hand foot and mouth disease. Oh ouch that, uh, that sucks. I, w- I wouldn't have, I obviously wouldn't have gone to the event if I knew um uh, yeah of prior but didn't I you know I, I thought I maybe just had like an allergic reaction to somebody something. Yeah that's fair. But uh, I bet like you're we were, were you okay like Several days afterwards, yeah. Um, it lasted for a while, it lasted for like a couple of weeks, but oh, shoot, yeah, I'm obviously all good now, <laughs> yeah, of course, uh, absolutely. And then, and then it started to like start to spiral upwards for you, like you start like ringing off events, so you go Pasadena, you go Las Vegas, you go Knoxville, and uh, Indianapolis, Niagara Falls, like, like 
list keeps going on and on, man. Like, where was it at that point that you like kind of realized, or you knew that you you could be like really big in this game? Um, I actually had like some huge confidence issues. Yeah. Uh, and like I don't know, I just kept topping and what I was doing kept working out, and I kept getting better. Um, play, playing every day and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and then um, it's probably it's probably after it's probably after I went to the finals with Jesse. Wow, I think I'm actually probably really good, and like I could definitely get better. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like then you know the season I've had. This year, you know, uh, pre-corona was was ridiculous. Yeah, I, I, I think had, that was had like mul- multiple top fours, a win, mm-hmm. top eights. It was it was great. Mm-hmm. And is there's a like, kind of maybe something you do differently than anyone else, or something that kind of separates you to kind of that helps you like put yourself over the top, considering like your resume within the past two years. Um. So, I mean, this is not going to sound very modest, but <laughs> go, 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 I, please. I think I'm, I think I'm a very, very good deck builder, and I think that's yeah. what like separates it a lot because mm-hmm. like deck building just takes a long time to like master and then like get really good at, and it like work over and over again because mm-hmm. you have to come up with some like crazy ideas and then like hope they work out well not like hope but like you test them and see if they work out and you know a lot of people can can be afraid to like test the waters uh, from from like what's the standard and like deviate away from it Mm -hmm. um i feel like i uh i feel like i'm a a very good deck builder uh or like one of the best in in, uh, the deck building sense for sure and then like um i obviously just played a lot and a lot and a lot and like my my technical play um has gotten to like borderline perfect so Mm -hmm. um when you have like very very good technical play and then like you're able to make reads and all this stuff and then and then you're also like building very good decks it just kind of just kind of works out for you and uh, you know, are there any like basic tips or anything that you could uh, like share with everyone about uh, when it comes to deck building? Um. So, deck building tips. Gonna have to give uh this the signature answer here, which is gonna be to uh, check out the Duelist Academy Patreon. Mm-hmm. For uh, deck deck building and coaching and stuff like that, they have uh, a lot of very great coaches like Jesse Asala, Furman, Nashad, Bowden, Max Reynolds, mm-hmm. uh, and, and the list goes on. And you know, all, all these guys are like super great Yu Gi Oh players, and they they can teach you a lot. Um, a little like I guess a quick tip. Um, you know, I, I don't really have like tips off the top of my head per se, mm-hmm. but, um, I would say like doing math and making sure like cards in your deck make sense and like they're all working towards achieving the same goal mm-hmm. is, uh, is very good. And like, man, like making sure that your cards are like trading well with your opponents when you, when mm-hmm. you guys are, you know, trading hand traps or playing into a board back and forth, mm-hmm. you want, you want to make sure you're not like playing cards that cost you two cards and cost your opponent one card to interact with them. You want to try to make sure your cards can do as much as they can. I've seen you endorse uh, Duelist Academy before, and it's been mentioned several times here on our podcast. Are you actually a part of it? Uh, yeah. So I'm a, I'm a deck doctor on mm-hmm. Duelist Academy right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, I hope to do more for them in the future, but, mm-hmm. uh, uh, as of right now, I I have joined the team as a deck doctor, and I I like help commentate the Twitch streams and stuff like that from time to time. Mm-hmm. 
and how, how's that experience been for you being with uh, this dualist academy? Which just kind of launched, well, I mean, like, not I mean, too long it's ago. Great. Like those those guys are all my friends, so it's it's, it's like a it's it's like always going to be um, a good experience for me naturally to hang hang out with my friends. Yeah, and like work work alongside them. Do you have any other roles in there? I, I really I really do think for... that the service like they're providing is just it's too too good to pass up. Really yeah, is. yeah, and like the the resumes on all these players that are on like Dual Academy kind of speak for themselves. Like these are all like quality names that are on there, and especially yeah, and like and they've, had, they've had students like uh, David Edwards, mm-hmm. um, who is a solid student, mm-hmm. just just won like uh, the last uh, LCS, which is like the luxury the luxury online equivalent. Yeah, luxury uh, uh, championship series. Yeah. Yeah. So so it's like stu- students are doing super well on those. Like I, obviously, you know they're they're doing right by their students. I, yeah, you should everyone everyone that's trying to improve should def- and should definitely jump on that. Yeah. Even if you think you are pretty good, you you know you can always improve. I'm I'm not perfect, you know. Je- like not not even like Jesse's perfect. We we are, are all always getting better. Yeah, and I, I think that a lot of players that you see uh, at, at YCSs are like they're competent. They have like the potential to top, but they like, consistently miss out. And I would f- put myself in that position. So you would think like putting a player like of my skill caliber would like ha- definitely help me improve my skills if I were to join join a Duelist Academy. Oh, of course, of course, it would. I I, I truly believe that anyone that. Mm-hmm. I, I believe that anyone that signs up and, and pays for the services Duelist Academy is providing will will walk away with a, a better understanding of the game and, and be better at it. And when did you start uh, being a part of Duelist Academy? Uh, uh, like a, a month ago. A month ago? Uh, like about a month ago, maybe a little, maybe a little more. Okay, so, when, so how did that uh, invitation come about? Because I know it's been up for, for several months now at this point. Uh, they just kind of asked for new deck doctors, and and I applied. I I have I have a lot of credentials, and mm-hmm. I know what I'm doing. So I was a shoe in for uh you know deck doctoring, and then I'm you know I, obviously really good friends with everybody. So I started um help helping out with the Twitch streams from time to time mm-hmm. as well, and you know it's just it's great. I love it. I love it there. And what else do you do on uh on Duel? Sorry, not just you, but what else does Duelist Academy do for or for Yu Gi Oh players who decide to sign up and uh, and join that Patreon? Um, so I know they have a turn a free tournament for everyone that is a patron at any level. Mm-hmm. Uh, Sala a Sala hosts a tournament for a, uh the winner gets a box. And then second mm-hmm. place gets like free coaching and like deck doctors and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Um, they have a, a free tournament for anyone that's a patron every weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like you get uh you get deck doctors, which is like um send, send, sending in a deck you have, and then like we give a give a write up explanation and edit edit the deck for you and explain explain like the changes we've made and why, why we've made these changes um, mm-hmm. and why they might, might be better than the, the deck you submitted. Mm-hmm. Uh, then I know that the coaches like Je- Jesse, Asala, Furman and them, mm-hmm. um, they all write like little pieces of content, like locked up content uh, mm-hmm. that you can only see as a patron. Uh, they, I think they release two pieces a week, mm-hmm. but don't quote me on that. Uh, I'm, st- I'm still like not super familiar with everything yet. Okay. Um, because because I don't do that stuff. Yeah, uh, you're uh, you're just strictly a deck doctor at this point in time. Yeah, yeah, and then and then like I do like Twitch stuff from time to time, but I, I'm not like I'm I'm nowhere near as like involved as they are yet. Yeah. Um, so I think they they do pieces of content twice a week. Um, the most recent one that I, I saw and I, and I was super interested in was a writing about, uh, 
why it's okay to go over 40 cards and, and even beneficial. Um, and I totally agree with him. And uh, to check out his reasoning on that, you should go look at the Duelist Academy Facebook page, uh, which can link you to the Duelist Academy Patreon. Mm -hmm. And be sure to check check, out, check us out on Twitch at Duelist Academy as well and on YouTube. And we and those links will be put down in the description below if you'd like to visit Duelist Academy. And they've they've definitely created results. I, I've seen it firsthand, and I know that uh, you know Jesse talks high of it as well. And, and I've, I've seen it work as well. And these are high quality players that you're getting advice from. So I could I could totally endorse it as well because it, it, I can see it's a quality product. It's really nice that you guys are able to kind of share some of your wisdom because I know there's a lot of like middling players, kind of like myself, who are just trying to not get like their first top because I've topped the YCS before, but like do it cons on a consistent basis or like a semi-consistent basis. And I'm yeah. sure there are a lot of players that are like, are like me that just have that kind of trouble. And like when they run into like an elite player like Jesse, that's where they kind of like choke up and like and start to lose and can't really like win those games. Yeah, for sure. So after like all of this, that you've won the YCS game, you've won YCS, you've had like a list of, uh, a list of like b big events that you've been able to put on your belt. Uh, what's the next goal for you as far as Yu-Gi-Oh goes? Uh, I mean, I am still hungry for a win on my own for sure. Yep. And as you know, as many wins as I can, as I can rack up. Uh, but uh, the biggest goal for me is def definitely to. Uh, compete in the world championships and win the world championships. Yeah, because I know that, uh, unfortunately, at least for the United States, that they've yet to win uh, a world championship. I would, uh, I would, I'm, I would love to be the first American to win a world championship. And uh, yeah, and I'm sure you're itching to because we've we've seen players get close. We've seen Americans get close, and I'm not. Uh, I don't want to write off uh, Americans. For FYI, yeah, Canadian. I think we've gotten, I, don't want to I think we've gotten second place twice. Yeah, twice. Uh, I think Eric Christensen was one. Yep. I can't remember who the other one uh, was. Offhand. Vincent Vincent Paglia. Right, right. Lost to Galley. Yeah, and you've been, and they've been very close as well. And I know that America has been looking for that elusive one, and hopefully you are because, like, I love the way I love the way you play. I've seen you play before, and I've, again, I've sat beside you many times at a, at a regional before. Mm -hmm. We kind of played alongside each other, so I know that you're you're the real deal, and I've seen you play. So like, you're not. You're you're not fake. You're not anything like that. You're, you're legit, and it's it's nice to see that you kind of like rose up from you know that you, your unfortunate mishap with with football, and now you went back to the game that you love, and all of a sudden you're you're ringing off events like no other. Like your resume is something that you know players that have been playing this game for years like can't even get close to. Like again, I played this game since two thousand and three. I only have one YCS top under my name, and I would like to think that I'm a pretty solid player in my own right, but not to the level that you have. So, I mean, everything that you've done so yeah, far is, it is pretty kinda, huge. It is kind of crazy, like, how how fast I uh, got good, per se. Mm -hmm. That um, I, like, really wanted to work hard and, and like, strive towards it and, and get better and, like, achieve what I've achieved. But I didn't, I didn't think, like, when I, you know, first picked up cards again that, like, it would it would be this soon that I would be at the level I am. And it's uh and, it's it's still off for me to handle as well. Yeah. Can't believe it. Yeah, really. I mean again, like you told me before, it's 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 a surreal experience for you because like mm -hmm. you finally won what you were chasing. But you know, how did you get into Yu-Gi-Oh? First of all? Uh the T V show. Uh five five Ds is my oh, favorite. <laughs> yeah, I used to watch it on four kids in the mm -hmm. morning. Uh as a little kid. And uh, it was really cool. And then I got the DS game Yep. for wow. 5Ds. And then, you know, I was uh, <laughs> I was so bad at it. But, um, <laughs> I'm sure we all were. And the, du the dual puzzles used to just stump me. It was crazy. I love doing those puzzles, but, honestly. Um, They're so fun. Yeah, the, the, the game was really fun. And then and then I decided, like, one weekend I told, I told my uh, parents I wanted to try and Play it for real, and then my my first cards ever were uh, was a the Dragoonity structure deck. Yep, and I got waxed by windups, and my whole hand was discarded. Oh, yep. When and then, and then I had it, and then all I had was a Miss Valley Falcon, mm -hmm. 
And yeah, that was that was the first game you ever played in your life. Oh, really? So that's uh, not really a fun way to get yourself immersed no. in the game when you can't even get to play the game on your very first yeah. one. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's you know it's weird because when I, when I came back to the game, um, it was it was in like Pendulum FTK format. So, um, this is I guess more of the same is is what I'm trying to say. Mm-hmm. But you know, th- thankfully going through that, and that that's kind of puts you to like where you are now. And now you can start. Yeah. Like I just, mean, the, just but, but the game the game is great, and I, I love the com- the company that you know makes the game. So it's mm-hmm. it's, it's great. I love playing. Yeah, and you've and you certainly made a lot of uh, close friends with the game too. Like yeah, I've I've, I've definitely of- made lifelong friends through this game. And yeah, couldn't be, couldn't be more thankful for it. Yeah, and I'm sure, like I'm sure that's the same for a, a lot of other people because I have a lot of friends that with this that have played the game but don't even play anymore. Like my best friend, he doesn't play anymore, but we're still best friends and we've been that way for for years on end. And I'm pretty sure that will probably be the same for you once you, you know, kind of get older and, and and in the future, you know, kind of have that. Even if you decide not to play the game anymore, or if your friends don't anymore. Yep. Man, is it, it's just been really fun to watch you play and just kind of hear about your story in the past two years because I I, because I've been in this game for a long time and I haven't even heard of you until a couple years ago what you like your name just kept ringing off on all these big events and then you started coming to to Toronto which is close to where I live and started like playing in our events as well beating everybody out it's kind of been fun um I know there was one Toronto regional we were sitting beside each other and I think like yep. on the same side of the table too. And I forget his name offhand. I know he posted in Zodiac Duel a lot, but he was kind of chirping you a little bit and saying like, let's see who's like the better player out of both of us. He, he was kind of coming off with uh, a bit of arrogance. It was, uh, uh, it was Milano. <laughs> and uh, Mil- Milano was like, I challenge you to a who's better match. Yeah. <laughs> and then and then I 2 0 Milano in five minutes. Yeah, because I, I think I was playing then, against. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. And then he ne- he never he never uh uh talked crap or anything about me <laughs> ever again. It was so funny. Yeah, he's a, he's a good kid though. Yeah, because I, I remember I think I, I went over to you and I was I was I, I think I whispered to you. I don't know if you remember or not. But I said to you like, "Man, I hope you beat him really bad. Like I hope you do." <laughs> Because I know I was sitting beside. You. I think we were sitting at roughly like table three and table four at that time, and it was uh, round six, if I recall correctly. I I was going off against Triff at that point in time, and uh, he he was the only guy that ever to. Oh, sorry, he actually he, he too owed me that day, but he got me in time. But I was so glad that you were able to like knock him down a peg. I'm like, thank God. And then and then I was <laughs> like, oh yeah, I'm like yeah, that's Dom- like right, that's Dom- like He should be kicking his ass. Of course he should. So sometimes you gotta call the American to do the dirty work. <laughs> I mean, you, you did the job, so I I can't complain about that. Uh, I'm glad you came in and uh, yep. kind of put him down a peg at least. It was it was it was a friendly match. It was a friendly match. Did you know him beforehand? Uh, uh briefly, yeah. Oh, okay. So what? So what was your reaction when he was like kind of? Like teasing you and kind of goading. I mean, you when, into whenever, this. whenever somebody teases me, especially about Yu Gi Oh, I kind of laugh it off. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> he he had been like, oh man, it was so funny, and I, I was just like, all right, I'm just gonna play him, and if, and if I beat him, then it's just perfect. <laughs> and I was like, if, and I was like, if I lose, like, oh well. I, I'm so glad. I'm so glad again that you like knocked him down a peg, and I know you taught that regional. Uh, then I remember the next Toronto regional after that. I think we were playing, I want to say around like round four or five. And I think the guy across from you was like kind of scared to go against you. And then you were just kind of like dicking around with him when you were playing Orcus. Like you weren't even playing the right plays properly. You were just, just I like, actually, you were playing whatever. I actually threw that match. I became friends with him. Oh, did, did you, oh you threw it. What? Oh, you, you threw it? I, I didn't know you threw it. No, 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 no. I said, I said, like, during, like, through the match, during the oh, match. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I actually became friends with him. Oh, okay, I see. And it was, and it was funny. He, 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 like, at first when when we sat down, um, and it's, 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 uh, you know, it, it's kind of common, like, sometimes now where it's like, 
somebody's like a little nervous to play me or like they know who I am when we sit down. Mm-hmm. And I was like, it, it was, it was the same for him. He, he was like, I mean, I can't believe I have to play against down on the couch. And I was like, you know, okay. Like, mm-hmm. uh, and, then, and then we were playing and then like, uh, I, I like to be like funny and joke around. And, mm-hmm. and so like, I was, I joked around with him a little bit and then he started joking around and, and then, uh, we were both like, making each other like laugh like we were like in tears laughing through our match. yeah it was hilarious yeah because that, that was exactly what was happening to me when i was sitting bes- i was sitting beside like one table over but i was sitting across from you and i was yep. laughing my ass off when i was watching you guys play because i think i finished my game i beat my guy fairly quick and then i turned over to watch you guys to play because i was just having a hoot just watching you guys just kind of like jerk around with that match yeah it was it was like so he was like so far behind it was ridiculous like it was just yeah. outrageous yeah and like we we were uh, and then like we became friends and we were laughing and stuff and uh friended each other on facebook and um and, and then like i just started making really bad plays so he would like so so then like he would draw cards and then make really bad plays and then like because yeah. it, it was like so clear i had won the match earlier yeah they like we just started like memeing, and it was just fun. It was really fun. Yeah, it, it felt like the equivalent of like putting like a dollar bill on a hook and like on a fishing hook, and then when he tries <laughs> to grab it, you, kind of like reel it in a little bit and uh, and try to do that again and again. Like you know like, that that fishing meme for like sports championships. You see that off often, and that I felt like that was kind of the situation you were playing with him. You're like kind of toying with him at that point. I uh, I wasn't like toying with him. It was all it was all in fun. I, yeah, I, I remember like. You know, m- malicious and like, don't kill my opponent or something. So, so I have to make them sit there. Never yeah. like that. Yeah, because he wasn't bitter or anything. He was also just having a hoot uh, as well, from what I witnessed on that match. Yeah, it was it was funny. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm let's bring this circle now. Now that you like, now that you we've gone through like all your credentials, man. It's like, like how does it feel to like consistently be like in the top cut and going through that? Uh, that pressure of like of that top cut and trying to play through that. Oh, I, I, I kind of answered this earlier. So it's like you know maybe the first time or two you're like a little nervous, but um, especially like if you just go go like through multiple rounds of top cut and and like over and over again, like I have, it's just, it's just like it's like an it's like another match. Yeah, so you, you kind of feel like a little. You just, you just take it one match at a time. That's all it is. Yeah. That's a really good tip to to tell everybody because usually when people lose like the first match, they they think it's kind of like oh man, I, I have to like win like eight straight, nine straight just to even top it. And yeah. that, that's a good that's a good thought to have. You just take it one match at a time. Mm-hmm. I don't don't think about your record or who you're playing against or anything. Just mm-hmm. you sit down and you're playing a match. That's all yeah. it is. And holy heck, a bunch of matches that you've uh, you've gone through. I mean, glad you finally won that match because I didn't know who the other guys were that you played in Las Vegas, man. But, like, I knew you. I don't know Scott at all. I've crossed paths between Steven, but I've never actually, like, really talked to him a whole lot. So, and, like, you were the only one on that team that I've actually, like, like sat down and actually talked to. They're, like, they're, you know, they're great guys. They're great yeah. guys. Yeah. And I, and I know that they've been around the game for quite some time. Like, I, like, I know of them, of course. But yep. I never actually like sat down. Like you were the only one out of that out of that six that were sitting down and playing that like I like personally knew and I personally had a conversation with. So I was praying to God that you were winning that match, and thank God that you did. And I was just, I was so ecstatic for you, and I was really happy. So and, and I can only imagine again, even though we've talked about it several times, uh, the way you felt when you finally won that championship. So like, again, I don't think I've actually told you straight out. Like congratulations on that, man, and I, I hope to see you. Like back on the circuit real soon once this whole pandemic is over. Thank you. Yeah, man. Man, it's been a pleasure to talk to you, man. I'm finally glad we were able to get this out of the way. Any shout outs you want to give before we wrap things up? Uh yep. Shout outs to Game Nation. Shout outs to Duelist Academy. Um shout shout outs to, you know, obviously some of my closest friends like Jesse. Um that have like been along with me for most of, if not all, the journey in some cases. Um, and uh, see you next time. 
Dominic, man, thank you so much again for uh, for coming on. I really appreciate uh, you taking out the time to be on my podcast. It's really not a problem, bro. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that is Dominic Couch, the most recent YCS championship winner in the 3v3 in Las Vegas, joining us here on the Gate Expectations podcast. Thank you so much for joining us. Dominic, thanks again for joining us, man. You have yourself a wonderful day. No problem. Thank you, usual. Thank you. Don't forget to like and subscribe. For more information, check out the Gate Expectations podcast on YouTube, Facebook, Patreon, Twitter, and Spotify.